Greetings, and welcome to the 38th episode of Morrowind Modding Showcases. As ever, I'm your host, Dark Elf Guy, and today we have a full episode of 13 Imperial themed mods for your viewing pleasure. And real quick, I would just like to remind everyone to check out Mod Town 2015 and get involved in that amazing community project. But anyway, as always, you'll find the download links for each mod shown down in the description below. So why don't we go ahead and get started with our popular mod of the week. Which this week is Pegasus Horse Ranch by Mad Max. This mod adds a large horse ranch and stables right near Voss in the Grayslands, and it's really a decent sized complex with a number of horses, as you might expect, and various facilities to train them in. It even has an NPC that just travels around the whole compound on horseback, offering various wares such as carrots and hay to feed one's own horses with. And as soon as you enter the main building, you'll be greeted by the front desk NPC that'll explain that you can buy, sell, breed, and train horses on the ranch, assuming you've got the coin. All these different topics have a fair amount of dialogue to them, explaining each one in detail. And you'll even find a complete catalogue of all the available horses, which includes over half a dozen different varieties of breeds. And you'll find books scattered across the ranch that'll go into more detail about all these different types of horses, their origins, strengths, and weaknesses of each type. You'll also find this fellow here, where you can buy and sell horses, not to mention rent a room if you're looking for a prolonged stay at the Pegasus Horse Ranch. And of course, a cool feature here is the elevator to the second floor, where you'll find more service NPCs, one of which can sell you beer and assorted booze during your stay, if you so desire. Now to buy a horse, you just visit the outdoor pin and click on the horse you want, and these range in price from about a thousand drakes to five thousand gold or so depending on the breed and the stats. And after that you can hire a horse trainer, if you so desire, to improve your horse's skills and attributes. And to ride your horse, you simply go up to it and activate them, and you're pretty much good to go. A horse has two different speed settings, a trot and a full gallop that you can sort of toggle between. And as you can see here, your character will appear on top of the horse. Even if it is a bit of an awkward animation, you have to remember this mod was made in 2004, so the animation sequences are a bit dated. But even so, you can still ride it around Vardenfell if you so desire. And your horse also comes with a number of companion features, and you can see its statistics at any time, give it food, and of course it has companion share, so you can take even more gear with you as you travel around Vardenfell. As you can see here. You can even have the horse follow you, so there's no need to ride it all the time, and this is especially helpful for when you're traveling around into cities. And another feature of this mod is how you can take two horses and breed them together to get a brand new horse. And here you can see the result of breeding a new horse for your stable, though it will take a few days for it to become a full-grown and rideable horse. And with Pegasus Horse Ranch, you can finally accomplish your lifelong dream of just riding around Vardenfell atop a western-style horse who hopefully won't ruin your boots like some animals will. For our House Mod of the Week this week, we have Ebonheart Home Sibylic by Skill 8. This mod adds an Imperial-style fort-like structure right next to Ebonheart outside of the Southern Gates. And this is a beautifully detailed estate, including a main tower, staff quarters, an outdoor blacksmith, and also a docking area all of which is just lavishly detailed and makes for a very scenic estate to visit. And there's a number of nook and crannies and small hideaways located all over the edges of the estate, like this little fishing dock, which just holds a beautiful view of the ocean. This estate isn't without a story, of course, and you'll find documents all over the place that flesh out the personalities and hidden secrets of the people who live here. And the estate includes a small quarters for the staff that's generally well decorated. And like everywhere else, you'll find some notes and journals giving you a glimpse into these people's lives. And the main tower is composed of a number of small and lavishly decorated rooms, like the kitchen here, which is warm and cozy and includes a small space for dining. 
You'll also find a small master bedroom that also doubles as a study and library, a place where any researcher or bookworm would find themselves quite at home. And there's also an exquisite alchemy lab available, very well cluttered and detailed, where you'll find some hints about the previous master, and throughout this mod you'll come across several hints of a Jekyll and Hyde theme. And this tower also comes fully stocked with an outdoor dining veranda, where you can enjoy a pleasant meal and take in the views of nearby Ebonheart. There's even a rooftop study for relaxing, including a hammock and some more alchemy equipment for those who prefer an outdoor view when they work. Of course, this tower has many, many secrets just waiting to be discovered, from hidden loot to caverns and darker secrets just waiting to be discovered amongst the nooks and crannies of Ebenhart Home Sublick, and this is absolutely worth your while to check out. This week's gameplay of the week is Standard Bears by Dan Jib. With this mod, Larry Sparrow will now offer you an additional task if you're a member of the Imperial Legion. You can agree to carry a banner of the Empire around Vardenfell as a way of reminding the citizenry that they are never out of the reach of Imperial law, and in exchange, you'll be paid in gold for the time you spend carrying this banner around. And you can equip the banner just like anything else in your inventory, and it'll take the position of your shield when you carry it around. And obviously you won't be able to use your shield with this equipped, and the banner is quite large to just carry around in general, and it is kind of, you know, a comical sight, carrying the banner of the Empire with the uh, sigil of the dragon just bobbing around from one end of Vodenfell to the other. And this means that you can, of course, have plenty of opportunities to taunt the poor Dunmiri citizens with the Imperial banner in their own towns and cities, reminding them that they are indeed a occupied territory. You can even confront Talvani councillors in their own chambers and taunt them with that hated symbol of imperial authority. Always a good bit of fun, that. And after you've carried the flag around for a while, you can return to Larry's Pharaoh for your payment for promoting the Empire. And you can do this as much as you want, to earn just a little bit of extra gold on the side as you adventure around Vardenfell, and this is particularly useful for new players who might have a hard time making gold otherwise. Next up is our Dungeon Mall of the Week, and this week we have Battle at Buckmoth by Crank Gorilla. At Fort Buckmoth, you'll encounter this herald who will tell you about a mystical artifact discovered by Imperial researchers. A ring that will teleport you to a realm out of time and space where battle rages. Once you pick this ring up, you can talk to the herald again who will tell you a bit about this mysterious plane where an alternate Fort Buckmoth lies in internal siege. As soon as you put on the ring, you'll be teleported to this hellish realm, where untold creatures are attacking a replica of Fort Buckmoth, and a massive battle reigns beneath the ramparts, with Imperial soldiers fighting and dying to protect the keep. You can use the bells on the, this rampart to summon new troops or new opponents to keep the battle waging. And you can also join in the battle yourself, fighting alongside these soldiers as they fight and die in the name of the Empire in one large brawl of combat and carnage. As you can see here. And there's also just a ton of new and terrifying creatures to sort of keep you occupied, and in order to survive you will need to be at least level 10 to 15 to really make it through the battle at Buckmoth. This is not an easy mod to play through. For our items from the week this week, we're looking at Imperial Shieldsmith by Zordazug and Lord Yig. This mod adds Imperial Smith shops to most of the major Imperial keeps on Vodenfell, including this rather large one right here on the waterfront of Ebenhart. Inside this new building is a fairly well decorated shop with lots and lots of heraldic images with new shields and tapestries including in total about a couple dozen different new shields that you can buy. And you can see a lot of these different shield styles decorating the walls, and you also find a couple of merchants here selling these shields. And down in the basement of the shop you also find a few armorers who offer armor training and also repairs for weapons and armor. As you can see here, 
And of course, you also find some smaller Imperial Smith shops at various forts across Vardenfell, like this one at Fort Moonmoth. This week's question of the week is Snakes on a Plane by Kalguru. With this mod, you'll stumble across an Imperial Galleon docked at Ebenhardt, and you'll be confronted by this fellow who'll give you a simple quest and then mock you for not having a magic compass that marks every quest objective for you to find. There's a lot of pokes at Oblivion and just in general meta humor in this mod, so you can expect quite a lot of this. And eventually you'll find yourself stuck in a dark hall with Frank, your resident Duomo Centurion companion. And as you might expect, from the name of the mod, you will indeed run into snakes in the darkness. Quite a lot of snakes, in fact. And this dark cave will eventually open up in the middle of a very peculiar building. And it should be pointed out that you'll see a ton of very strange things in this mod. It is, after all, a mod made by Kalguru, the author of the Muffin Wind mods, so all manner of peculiar sights and sometimes sounds should be expected. Now over the course of this quest, you'll get to fight snakes on a plane of oblivion, as sort of promised in the mod title, and also take part in some very unusual games, like a Morrowind version of Minesweeper, where bombs could be under any tile. Now a few pro tips, you're going to want to save a lot during this quest series. Death is going to be everywhere, and unless you're some sort of Minesweeper god, you will die at least once. And in any event, there's all this and many more shenanigans to be found in Snakes on a Plane of Oblivion. Next up is our Land Mass of the Week, and this week we have Castle Wars 3 Ultimate Edition by Falador Wiz, aka Alex. This mod adds a new cave entrance to Cedanine, guarded by this Argonian fellow who will give you some information about what you'll find on the other side for a price. And inside you'll find a quick dungeon guarded by a particularly annoying boss that you'll essentially have to defeat three different times in three different forms before moving on. But after that, you'll find a dwarven train that'll take you to a new set of islands far to the north. And here you can see this new island chain where this dwarven train will leave you in front of an encampment of war advisors. Each of these NPCs acts as a menu for you to change mod settings, like the difficulty, where the bodies disappear, and other various performance options. And these NPCs also allow you to stop playing one of the two included game modes in this mod, such as survival mode and also campaign mode. In survival mode, you're charged with surviving as many waves as possible while defending your castle. To help you on this endeavor, you can purchase troops and supplies at the start of each round. And after you buy troops, you have just a little bit of time in each round to hand place where you want your troops to go. And as the name of the mod implies, you're basically defending your castle from endless waves of foes, with the goal to last as long as possible. So you want your troops to be placed where you can command them easily. And when the battle starts, you're given a number of spells to make troops charge forward, retreat, or pick particular targets. And I do apologize for the lag here. Some of these big battles will lag a lot. But the more battles you win, the more gold you'll get as a reward. And there's also a campaign mode, which combines the fighting of survival mode with basic strategy, resource gathering, and the ability to conquer a whole island. You start out with one fort where you can meet with your advisors. But from there, you'll have the opportunity to go out into the world and conquer nearby cities. Like this city here, and you'll typically find an advisor somewhere in the city who'll ask you if you want to capture the city along with how many resources it produces and how many opponents are defending it. And if you do choose to attack, you'll be teleported to a castle arena where you'll have to beat the defenders. And keep in mind that campaign mode is sort of in alpha right now and can get a little buggy at times, but there is a ton of content here for you to do in Castle Wars regardless. For our MTC mod of the week this week, we have Vorwuda Hippolta Decius by Vorwuda, and I do apologize if I mispronounced any of that. Those are some very strange names to sort of work around. But anyway, this mod adds two new potential companions for you to find in Cedanin, a brother and sister. You can choose to have both, or just one, follow you around as you quest around Vodenfell. 
Now, both of these Imperial Companions have full companion features as you might expect, including the option to give them weapons and armor. But do keep in mind that this mod was made before Bethesda added companion share features to Morrowind. So you have to appreciate the fact that the author must have spent hours scripting in the ability to give these NPCs any piece of armor or weapons found in the game, such as iron armor, steel armor, silver weapons, ebony weapons, really all of it is covered and it's just all done in dialogue. And it's really quite impressive in a scripting sense. And you can also have your companion change clothes or equip particular armor pieces as you so desire, as you can kind of see here. And there's also options to track each companion's stats. And each companion also has a background story with the possibility of romance should you keep adventuring alongside them. Your companion also knows a fair amount of magic and has a number of spells that they can use. For example, they can cast a light spell on you for easy dungeon delving, as you sort of just light the way in the darkness of each dungeon. And as you explore Vardenfell, you'll find these companions will come quite in handy as you fight off opponents and delve into the depths of Morrowind. This week's new meshes and textures on the week is Imperial Force Retexture by Mike and Ike. Now, as you might expect, this mod is a texture replacer for the Imperial fortifications across Roddenfell, adding a nice darkish grey stone texture to these buildings. And you also notice there's a few different types of stone textures in use, to sort of give a good variety of different looks to these Imperial structures. And you know, the thing I just really like about this Imperial texture replacer in particular is that it really sort of highlights the strength and dominance of the Empire in these buildings. And here you can see another one of the forts in the Ascadian Isles region with these new textures, which also includes textures for Imperial doors as well. And this is a really a high resolution texture package, so it'll work well with MGSO or Logan's texture replacers. And of course, new textures for Imperial interiors are also included. And these have a really nice, solid stonework feel to them that works well with the strong presence of Imperial might in the Empire. And just like the exterior, there's a few different types of textures in use here. And overall, this all just really works well with Imperial architecture, and I do highly recommend it. Next up is our model's resource model of the week. And this week we have Barabas Imperial Housing Resource by Barabas. This resource is a massive collection of just really high quality imperial and urban style buildings. The quality of these models just cannot be understated. They're really great looking and come in about three or four different styles. And you also notice that this pack includes a number of other resources like shop and tavern signs, which you can kind of see here. And you also find a ton of just really neat architecture pieces like these archways with room for streets to go in underneath them. There's also small cottages, window bays, and a really neat feature of this resource is a small building with a finished interior shell on the exterior. So you can actually just walk right inside and see through the window, which is just a really cool addition. Now this is a very modular architecture set. Most of these buildings are composed of multiple pieces, allowing you to make them as tall or short as you want and possibly make a ton of different shaped buildings as you so desire. There's also a wide variety of chimney models to choose from, so your chimney skyline can be nice and varied if you know you're into that kind of thing. Now it has to be mentioned that there is a major downside to this model's resource, and that's the fact that no interior pieces are included, but you can use common imperial tile pieces pretty easily with these exteriors, and they should match up pretty well, minus the windows of course. There's also new models for carts and market stalls, and you also notice that some of the windows here are actually animated to mimic candlelights. And for those wondering, you'll be able to explore this neighborhood here as part of Mod Town 2015, so you can look forward to that later this year. And of course, if you want, you can also use these model resources with Mod Town 2015 if you should choose to join the project. For our underrated model of the week this week, we have Cyrodiilic Villa by Lochnarius. 
This mod adds a Mediterranean style imperial home on the hill outside of Ebenhort, with a total of three different buildings with a central garden courtyard. Now this small group of houses are owned by the Imperial Commission in Ebenhort, and used to house diplomatic guests. You'll have to steal the keys in order to get access, but once you do, you'll find a very lovely Mediterranean style home composed of a number of small rooms, including a downstairs study and upstairs master bedroom. As you can see here. Now you'll also find some dining areas in the second house, along with a second bedroom, as you might expect, all of which is nicely finished and decorated. And there's also a small building for training and storing goods, and overall this is just a really lovely, nice, themed home. This week's blast from the past one of the week is Crooked Tower by Noir Grimm. This mod starts out with a random messenger giving you a note in Balmora, and from there you'll eventually be led to this forsaken little isle off the Bitter Coast region, where the remains of an old Imperial Keep lay decaying in the swamp, abandoned under mysterious circumstances. And inside you'll find a spiraling staircase, sending you deep underground, for this old keep was built almost completely in the depths underneath Morrowind. And as you descend and explore these dark passageways, you'll eventually find this peculiar piece of paper. As you can see here, which oddly enough will start talking to you. And once you pull out the dagger in the poor fellow's head, you can pick him up and he'll act as a sort of companion for your journey through this dungeon, giving you directions and telling you the history behind this place. Now this mod is full of scripted encounters, like this wall here that'll slowly move out of your way if you keep harassing it. It is a very slow moving wall though and it will take quite a bit of time. And as you explore this massive underground complex, you'll find yourself in the midst of large maze-like chambers with lots of twists and turns that you'll just have to find your way around and through in order to progress in the dungeon. And eventually, as you crawl through these dark chambers, you'll start to learn more and more about the history and mysteries of this peculiar crooked tower. Finally, for our bonus one of the week this week, we have Night's Lance by Aiden. With this mod, you'll find a new NPC vendor in the Ebonheart Grand Council Chambers that sells a variety of lances, as you might expect. And of course, these lances look a lot like the sort of jousting lances used by knights, but in reality, they're actually used as long swords by the mod. And in total, there's about 12 different kinds of lances, with the main difference between them being that little flag at the top. And they do act a lot like regular lances should, particularly with thrust animations for long swords. You'll also notice that the flags on these lances are animated, so they'll blow around in the wind, and these are just really a nice addition to the arsenal of knight-like characters. That's it for this week. As always, you can find the download links for each mod shown down in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, do please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next week with another 13 mods for your viewing pleasure.